Okay, we've spent a lot of time constructing the unit circle and now we're gonna look at how we can utilize it. So the questions that are gonna be posed here are to find sine, cosine, and tangent of the angles that we constructed around the unit circle. There will be a four step process to this. All right, uh, we will have to identify the reference angle that we are dealing with, the coordinate pair that goes along with that reference angle, which quadrant the angle is located in, and then finally, which ratio we are dealing with in order to be able to answer the question. All right, so if you have your unit circle, it looks like this, uh, that may be helpful, although our goal moving forward is for you to be able to do these in your head. Now, obviously, in this current situation, I might have no idea if you're utilizing this or not, but I can tell you that in your future math classes, it will be beneficial for you to not have to refer to a unit circle every time you have to find the sine of 30 or the cosine of 135. Those are things you want to be able to answer off the top of your head. I did give this as a little synopsis in reference to our different reference angles and the sine, cosine, and tangent associated with them. The only thing you would have to determine is which quadrant you are located in uh, to be able to use that. So having this will be helpful uh, for uh, confirmation of the questions we go through today, so you can have that as we go. Uh, but I'm going to try to answer it in terms of addressing those four concepts, reference angle, coordinate, quadrant, and ratio. So here with the sine of 60 degrees, uh, obviously the reference angle here is 60 degrees, and the coordinate associated with that is plus or minus one half and plus or minus root three over two. Since we are dealing with the sine, we know that we will be dealing with the y coordinate. So now we all, all we have to do is identify which quadrant 60 degrees in is in. And obviously, since that is in quadrant one, we will utilize the y coordinates positive in quadrant one. So our answer here is root three over two. And that's it. Okay. If we move on to the cosine of 135 degrees, 135 degrees is a 45 degree reference angle. Okay, so if we have a 45 degree reference angle, we know that our coordinates are plus or minus root two over two, plus or minus root two over two. Okay, 135 degrees is in quadrant two. All right, we are dealing with cosine. Cosine is gonna utilize the X coordinate. So if we're gonna utilize the X coordinate and we're in quadrant two, we are going to utilize the negative version of this because the X coordinate is negative in quadrant two. So our answer here would be negative root two over two. For three, uh, we have a tangent. Now tangent of 210, 210 degrees is a 30 degree reference angle. It is located in quadrant three. All right, so this is a 30 degree reference angle. Now for a 30 degree reference angle, the value of tangent, if you remember, we can kind of go over to here, is gonna be the 30 degree reference angles. You'll see it's either plus or minus root three over three, okay? So our answer is gonna e either be positive root three over three or negative root three over three. Since 210 is in quadrant three, all right, we know that tangent is going to be positive in quadrant three. The reason why tangent is positive we established that it is a negative value divided by a negative value, which makes it positive in quadrant three, okay? Um, another item uh, that can be utilized here is a little acronym, ASTC. So this right here signifies all trig ratios are positive in quadrant one. Sine and its reciprocal are positive in quadrant two. Tangent and its reciprocal are positive in quadrant three, and cosine and its reciprocal are positive in quadrant four. So the acronym we use there, ASTC, all students take calculus. This will be helpful for you to determine where a trig ratio is positive. So we know tangent's positive in quadrant three. That means its reciprocal is positive. The other four ratios, sine, cosecant, cosine, and secant would be negative in quadrant three. Okay. So this answer, once again, would be positive root three over three. If we move on to the sine of two pi over three, uh, here we're dealing with the angle in radians, which is actually easier when we have a denominator of three. We know that's a 60 degree reference angle. Okay, so once again, 60 degree reference angle, same coordinates that I had written up here, so I'm not gonna write that again. 
I am dealing with sine, so we'll be looking at the y coordinate once again. All right, and with that, we will utilize the positive version of that because 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 2. Okay, 2 pi over 3 is located in quadrant 2. We're going to use that y coordinate. So our answer there uh, would be root 3 over 2 again. Okay. Here for number 5, the cosine of 5 pi over 4. Again, 45 degree reference angle because the denominator here is 4. So we'll have the same coordinate pair here. It's just going to be a matter of whether or not we're going to use the positive or negative version of this. All right. 5 pi over 4 is located in quadrant 3. Uh, remember that that goes pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. So in quadrant 3, in quadrant 3, the x coordinate is a negative. So this answer will be the same as well. Okay. Tangent of 11 pi over 6. Okay. Again, that is a 30 degree reference angle. And once again, the value of tangent is going to be either positive, negative, root 3 over 3. And 11 pi over 6, 30 degree reference angle, is located in quadrant 4. All right, we just established with this all students take calculus that in quadrant 4, the only items that are positive are cosine and secant. So that means tangent would be negative. And you can see that right there. So our answer there would be negative root 3 over 3. So those are six examples that involve our standard reference angles, but what about the quadrantals? Okay, that's something that should be addressed. With the quadrantals, again, angles that are on the axes, it is going to be beneficial for us to draw a little coordinate uh, plane with a circle on it. Okay, so here for like the sine of pi over 2, I know pi over 2 is up here, and the coordinate pair that is associated with that is 0, 1. Since I'm dealing with sine, my answer there is going to be 1, and that's it. Cosine 270, 270 is down at the bottom of the unit circle, so its coordinate pair would be 0, negative 1. Since I'm dealing with cosine, I'm going to use my x coordinate, so my answer there is 0. That's it. Tangent of pi. Pi is located on the left side of the unit circle, coordinates negative 1, 0. We discussed in the previous, uh, previous video that tangent is the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So in this case, that would be 0 over negative 1. The tangent will be equal to zero on the left side of that unit circle. All right. Tangent 3 pi over 2. Okay, 3 pi over 2 is in the same location as 270 degrees. It's at the bottom of the unit circle. So again, we're at zero, negative 1. Okay. Uh, again, tangent is going to be the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So in this case, it's negative 1 over 0. And we know negative 1 over to 0 is undefined. Right, that's what, that would be our answer. And then finally, the cosine of 0. Uh, just getting back to uh, a case here, I just wanted to deal with 0. 0 is just here on that right side of the unit circle. I wanted to deal with 1 there. So that's coordinates 1, 0. Since we're dealing with cosine, that's going to be the x coordinate. Our answer is 1. So those are some standard unit circle type problems. Ideally, you'll have the unit circle kind of memorize and know some shortcuts, be able to do it without referring to the unit circle. Um, I mean, that's where you want to get to um, by the end of the year.